Hello! It's finally here, bum, 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 bum. the Core Graphics Mini, or the PC Engine Mini, or the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini, depending where you are in the world, but we'll get on to that in a minute. So this was originally due out mid-March, um, but was massively delayed due to Covid and stuff, so uh, mine arrived about four days ago. And I've been playing it a lot ever since, obviously, because I've got to tell you about it now, haven't I? So, the PC Engine. I've done videos on the PC Engine in the past, so... Uh, if you haven't seen those, let's have a quick recap. It's basically kind of a... It was a console released kind of halfway between the 8-bit and 16-bit eras. It was sort of late 8-bit in Japan and early 16-bit by the time it got to America. And it has a very interesting history. Uh, it was very big, very successful in Japan, or it's called the PC Engine. They took it over to America and called it the Turbo Graphics 16. The you know, emphasising the 16-bit stuff, so it was more obviously up against the uh, Genesis and all that kind of stuff. And they also completely uh, redesigned the actual um, physical console, well, the, the case of it at the very least, for the American market, made it a lot bigger, so it looked like you were getting more for your money or whatever, because the original PC engine, of which this is the shape, although a different colour, we'll get onto that as well, oh, it's confusing, um, was a tiny little thing. In fact, this is a mini console, but it's only about, like, a 25% smaller, if that, because it was so wee in the first place, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, big in Japan, uh, did not sell well in America at all, really, and didn't even get a proper release over here. In fact, I didn't even know until a few years ago it had an official release at all in Europe. I thought it was only available through sort of um, grey market imports and that kind of thing. But no, they did release a version over here. I think it was just called the Turbo Graphics, as opposed to the Turbo Graphics 16. And they used the um, elongated American design. But for the European version of the PC Engine Mini, they're giving us the Core Graphics, which was a differently coloured version of the uh, PC Engine that had. Oh, off the top of my head, I think it had a slightly different CPU, which like fixed a minor bug or something, and it had a proper AV out, as opposed to a sort of direct RF out to your telly. But other than that, it was the same. It's very odd that they've chosen to give us this sort of Japanese-only version, and not the one we actually had here, but to be fair, that's probably because it was released in such ridiculously small numbers. I don't even know how they released it. It was never in shops or anything. So, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter what they give us over here since we have no nostalgia for it whatsoever, almost. I remember it being, you know, like a sort of gaming version of Bigfoot. You would see blurry photos of it in magazines and saying, oh, there's this uh, console thing and it's really amazing. But you never saw it in real life ever or even had the chance to take your own photos of it. Uh, what a time it was. So, yeah. We're going to quickly touch on the various different versions of the PC Engine released over the years, because they released a lot, like a ridiculous amount of side systems and upgrades and things, over 15 of them, I think it's like 16 or 17. I once did a video, um, catch it on YouTube somewhere, of um, all the different PC Engine variants that my friend Quang took to the Centre for Computing History, and several of us went through them all, and like, there are so many, it's unbelievable. And many of them, the games weren't compatible with one or another. You've got things like the Super Graphics, which I think uh, is one of the sort of least successful from a game's point of view of any sort of console release because it only had like six games released for it. There's uh, at least one on here. This basically has games from all different versions, from the CD versions, from the uh, cartridge versions. So the cartridges were technically little cards. You slide into the front there called Who Cards. Um, yeah, there's a lot of these things. As I say, I've done uh, a video on the TurboGrafx 60, no, the Turbo Express, which is the handheld one. You see, it, the, even thinking about it, the names start blurring into one in my head. <laughs> Uh, my actual version of this uh, that I have plugging into the telly, my original PC Engine, is a Turbo Duo, which is one with a built-in CD drive. Which is a shame, because it means I haven't got one of these little ones I can show you to compare size. But such is life, and you want to know something terrifying, friends? Something that I don't think has ever happened before in the history of the world? It's pretty much that the Japanese version of this mini console is the weakest, because it comes with um, joypads without the autofire feature. Can you believe it? Whereas the American and European versions do have the autofire. I know, right? I couldn't believe it either. Anyway, let's have a look at the nice box. You will notice, well, if you know of such things, there is no NEC logo on here. So originally PC Engine was a sort of 
a combination attack from uh, Hudson Soft, the people behind Bomberman and that, and NEC, who actually uh, made the thing with their super clever factory stuff. And, yeah, they were all bought by Konami, so which has, yes, got to be on the box somewhere. There. So this is effectively a Konami console, not just a pachinko game loosely based on Metal Gear Solid or something. Um, yeah, so you're not going to be seeing any NEC logo on there because everything's been bought up and assimilated and all that kind of stuff. But otherwise, yeah, they've done quite a good job of making it authentic to looking of the hardware of the time. Uh, so let us... Uh, well, here's the, here's the games. We'll get onto the games later. But to give you a slight taster of well there's there's a weird problem with this which is see it says pc engine games and turbo graphics 16 games but Stuart, you say weren't they the same thing well yeah but these ones are in english these ones are in japanese basically it's nice and easy isn't it but some of these games you cannot play unless you are completely fluent in Japanese. Um, and it says here on the back, which I think is massively misleading for the back of a box, PC Engine games. Featured games are in Japanese, and this tiny writing at the top, you probably can't even make it out there, I don't think I can get it close enough to the camera, with an asterisk, but the asterisk doesn't lead anywhere or come from anywhere. It's very, very odd. That's not how asterisks work. Um, so there's actually quite a few duplicate games. You've got like the Japanese and the English version, and they're pretty much the bloody same. And there's some of the one here you just won't be able to play. Now, this is a big problem, I think, when you look at something like Snatcher. So Snatcher, um, early Hideo Kojima game, who went on to do Metal Gear Solid and all that, uh, it's kind of a, I was going to say a mashup. to be honest, it's more of a rip-off, really, of um, Terminator and Blade Runner smashed together. It's very, very good, though. And it's a game a lot of people want to play and haven't played. However, there is no English language version for the PC Engine. So the version on here, you would have to be able to A read Japanese perfectly and B, understand spoken Japanese perfectly because there's, um, you know, speaking an audio in it in order to play the game. So sticking it on the back of the EU box in such a prominent position is a bit naff, really, isn't it? Because unless you have a very specific set of language skills or are Japanese, it is not going to be working for you, really. Um, and it's a bad thing to stick on the back of the box. Although I must say, this is not something I don't think you can actually get in a shop, so you wouldn't, like, see it on a shelf and go, oh, I'll get it for that. Oh, you liars. Uh, I think, in fact, this is only sold through Amazon in Europe, so uh, that's the end of that. Anyway, we shall get on to all this later. Um, made by Hori, there, they've got their hand in it, which is good, because they're very good manufacturers of arcade parts and stuff. And uh, it's rated 12 and over. That's interesting, isn't it? It's rated 12 and over because it's got violent swearing spiders that have sex. So, uh, that's something to look forward to. Right, anyway, anything else in the box? Not really. Tells you what's inside. PC Engine Core Graphics Mini, controller, HDMI cable, USB cable, instruction manual. Nice. No charger. They've given up on giving you micro USB chargers these days. <sighs> Can't really say I blame them now. Um, it's, it has moved on to the point where everybody's got so many bloody phone chargers that these things work with. You just don't need any more in your house. They do still give you the cable though, so there we are. Right, let's open her up and see what lurks inside. <gasps> Instruction manual! Is it in 47 languages? Yay! That's the main thing. It's not difficult. You put the wires in and you plug it in the mains and you tell you and that's about it really. Can't say much more than that. Here is the actual device itself if I can get it out. Under here is... well let's take the joypad out actually. Notice, nice long lead. Oh yeah, that's the kind of thing you want going on. Uh, a nice long micro USB lead as well, in case you don't have 50 in your house. I'm sure you do. I've literally spoken to a woman in her 80s who had multiple spare chargers. Um, it's not something you can avoid these days, and I think... I haven't actually looked at this, but this is just an HDMI cable, I believe. Yep, and there we are for all your HDMI needs. Right, here's the device itself. <gasps> It never comes out of the bag to keep it safe. No, here it is. Yeah, it's grey. It's got blue writing on it. Uh, the Japanese version is based on the original one, which is white with orange writing on. Or is it red writing? Oh, can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, well, swear at me in the comments. That'll sort it out. On the front, you've got two USB ports, four controllers. It only comes with one controller, which is a shame, because it has some decent two-player games on there. Um, you can buy separate controllers and a multi-tap to enable loads of people to play Bomberman and stuff. But uh, the, while they're listed on Amazon UK at the moment, they don't have a price or anything, so don't know the availability or the price of those, so I cannot comment. Um, that's it, really. That's all you've got. It says Konami on the bottom. You've got your external bus. 
take it off and actually HDMI out and uh, micro USB in for the power. Nice and easy. And you know what? It gets bonus points for this. When you switch it on, that little green blob goes over. Look. That is because the original unit, you slid your card in here with your game on. Sadly, I don't have access to any of the Who cards I have because they're in my office, which is inaccessible at the moment. Um, but you would s slot them in, do that, then you can't pull it out. You see, it blocks it. A bit like the old Game Boy cartridge retention thing. So that's cool, isn't it? A little bit of um, attention to detail, which we do appreciate as gaming nerd humans. AC adapter, AV out kind of point to the side or they're not anymore we won't worry about that right <laughs> we've got exact replica of the controller exact replica um this I, uh, plastic feels maybe a little bit cheaper than um this feels quite uh well i was gonna say it feels quite light and empty but i mean it's going to be isn't it it's only got a small bit of electronics in it um they're an actual controller but in use practically it's really really good the d-pad's very solid and feels exactly like a pc engine one should the buttons are very good you've got your auto fires here uh, off medium and then super speed if i recall correctly i think i only ever have it in sort of bottom or top positions um and if you're wondering why they would have an auto fire in here there are a lot of shoot 'em ups a lot of shoot 'em ups for the pc engine as you will discover when we go through the games because like there are many on here because it was the bread and butter of the PC engine. A bit like how SNK stuff and the Neo Geo was mostly fighting games, this stuff is mostly shoot 'em ups. Select run, and there you are. It's great. Really, really like this. It feels exactly as it should um, once you've been using it for two minutes. Um, 10 points for that, and also incredibly long lead. Another good points for that. It is a shame you don't get a second one when you did get a second with some of the other mini consoles from other manufacturers, which were cheaper, which we'll get onto at the end. But um, yeah, there we are. So what's it like to use then? Well, uh, short answer, really, really nice. So the menus are lovely, and when you select a game, you get a pretty animation showing a card being put into the system, and that changes depending on the hardware the game ran on. So, um, you know, if you change it over to a CD-ROM game, you see the card go in, but then the CD spin up as well. And when you change over to the Japanese games, the whole menu aesthetic changes. It, like, turns itself off and then comes back on as if you plugged a different console in. Again, appreciate these little touches. In fact, I think it's my favourite menu of any of these mini consoles. But most importantly, of course, what is the game emulation like? Because, you know, that's what the whole thing's about. And... As far as I can tell, it is absolutely spot on. I've seen no graphics problems that weren't um, in the original games, at the very least, no sound problems. Uh, they've added the ability to save your game at any point and come back to it later. In fact, you've got three save slots per game, which I think is pretty much a minimum thing to be putting on these, but it works very well and is all nice. And most importantly, gives a nice 720p output, which looks all clear and beautiful on your HD TV. Ah, now, um, we're getting into something slightly sticky here because there are different settings for the video output which is really important because the PC Engine had this weird thing where the image you saw was actually slightly stretched horizontally from what the console itself output. So, if you just replicate the pixels exactly in the original aspect ratio, everything looks too thin and squished up because it's expecting to be stretched out slightly. Now, stretching on an old analog CRT display wasn't really a problem at all because, um, you know, it's all slightly blurry and it's analog and all that kind of stuff. But with our uh, pin sharp digital spot vision devices we have these days, there are trade offs, right? So, the default setup is a 4x3 picture which doesn't quite fill the screen vertically, but it's been stretched uh, slightly horizontally horizontally so that everything's in the proper aspect ratio and not, you know, the squished up one the thing outputs. The vertical here is an exact three times scale, so vertically there's no problems, but the horizontal scaling gives, I find it hard to describe, like a slight glistening effect when the screen scrolls sideways. I mean, it's very minor to the extent that, frankly, I would imagine most people probably wouldn't notice it unless they were looking at it, and it certainly doesn't get in the way of the games, but it is a thing. Uh, the second option is for the 4x3 picture to fill the screen vertically, which obviously is slightly bigger, because, you know, it's filling your screen vertically, but it then adds that glistening effect to vertical scrolling as well, because it's now not an exact integer scale-up of what the um, original software is outputting. So the third option is an exact three times scale of the output, which eliminates all the shimmering and is lovely and perfect, but looks completely wrong because, you know, as I said earlier, the output was designed to be stretched a bit horizontally. So everything's too damn thin. And really, that's not 
a particularly good option to pick. Uh, my favourite is the standard setting with the gaps at the top and the bottom. I can totally see why they set that as the default, because it minimises the uh, glistening effect. Um, which is very minor anyway, but you know, if you can have it gone, have it bloody gone. Um, but it also looks right. It doesn't look all squished up, and you're not really losing much real estate from the top and bottom either. Uh, there's also a weird comedy mode where you can emulate a Turbo Express handheld. It looks like this. Uh, it's clearly in there for a bit of fun, shall we say. It's a bit of a novelty gag type thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't think anybody's going to be playing the game in a small window with a weird effect on it. And I suppose I've got to mention, as ever, there's a rubbish fake CRT filter which just blurs the image a bit and sticks scan lines over it. Don't bother. It's never worth bothering with them, these things, and this is no exception. And tragically, there is, of course, the option to stretch everything to 16 by 9 to fill your entire widescreen TV, which I will not even show you because it's, frankly, evil. I mean... It's... I don't understand it. Surely the only use of this thing is for idiots with brains the size of cashew nuts who want the entire picture horribly distorted for some reason. I don't get it. I think manufacturers just feel they have to have an option to fill the screen, but nobody in their right mind would touch it with somebody else's barge pole, frankly. So, the games! I am going to go through every single game on this thing, right? And then we'll add them all up afterwards, because there's... So, like, there's ostensibly 57 games, but there aren't really... I'll get into that at the end, but, yeah, I'm going to be very brief, but we're going to run through all of them, because PC Engine games not nearly as well-known as the old Sega and Nintendo stuff. So, we shall start with the TurboGrafx-16 games, the ones in English, unlike the box for some reason. So, we've got uh, Alien Crush, which is a very, very good pinball game. The ball is a little bit floaty, which means this will always be below the sort of really good Amiga games, like Pinball Fantasies and that for me, but it is a really good game. Inexplicably missing is the sequel Devil Crush. Devil's Crush? Devil's Crash? I don't know, I think it's multiple titles if I remember. Um, which is a real shame, because that's even better. Don't know why it's not on here. Blazing Lasers uh, is a solid shoot 'em up. Simple as that, it's shoot 'em up, really good fun. There's a lot of those on here, I'll be honest with you. Uh, in Japan, it was a film tie in for a film called Gunhead, but they removed all the um, references to that. For us Western peoples, uh, Dungeon Explorer is kind of like Gauntlet, frankly. Um, it's sort of a nice gauntlet game with multiple people. Uh, it's quite big in Japan, very influential over there, I believe, but didn't make much of a dent over here at all, really. Mainly because, you know, we didn't have anything to play it on us, really, did we? Uh, Moto Roda is sort of a sprint game, I suppose you call it. One of those overhead racing games. Um, it's... It's all right. It's not great. Um, certainly not... I mean, if you want, like, the best overhead racy game, although it's not technically overhead, you want something like Super Skid Marks on the Amiga, stick to Micro Machines or something, frankly. It's, it's interesting for five minutes, but not much else. Power Golf is fine. It's quite a simple golf game. Um, it's quite good fun. Decent implementation. Um, there's much better out there, but you won't waste your time with it. You know, you will have a bit of a laugh. R-Type, oh, yeah, I mean, the PC Engine version of R-Type is lauded as one of the best arcade conversions and rightly bloody so um the, the only question now is what worth really do coin up conversions have these days when you can quite easily emulate the original coin up i don't know that's a sort of different question isn't it but as conversions go it's bloody great uh, victory run is a sort of into the screen scaling racer thing not really into those sort of games. Um, I, I found it boring as hell, to be honest. It's certainly not an outrun or something, but that is not my genre, so maybe don't listen to me on that and ask a racing man. Chu Man Fu. It seriously is called that. Uh, it's a puzzle game with hints of sort of bomber man, I suppose. You're sort of pushing things around. Yeah, it's all right. I hadn't played it before, got bored of it quickly, but I do tend to with that kind of game anyway, but uh, it's something a bit different, isn't it? Now, JJ and Jeff, I was really surprised they put this on here at all, because um, it's like a localization of this Japanese game, which, right, I've got to remember the name of it. I can't. I should have written it down. It's like Kato and Ken, I think, or Kato-chan and Ken-chan, something like that, um, who were like TV stars in Japan and had this comedy game made, and it's all very scatological humour. Everything's toilets and poos and farts and goodness knows what. Um, but they kind of just genericised it for a Western release. Well, the American release, because, you know, they didn't have any specific PAL games. Can you tell that I'm still bitter that it was never properly released here. Um, and called it JJ and Jeff, yeah. And there you are, it's crap, frankly. <laughs> it's just not very a not very good platform. It's still got sort of elements of humour, but it's yeah, yeah. not really worth the time, honestly. Uh, military Madness. So this is... 
I mean, it's, it's a turn-based strategy game, um, you know, tanks and groups of things attacking each other and all that kind of stuff, very much like Advance Wars, and it's pretty good, it's, it's very simple, but frankly, now that Advance Wars exists, there's not really any point to go back to it, uh, Newtopia, right, is a Zelda clone, basically, the old 2D top-down Zelda RPG stuff, it's very much a clone of that. Not a game uh, genre I particularly enjoy, uh, I couldn't get on with it, but people who like this sort of thing say it's okay. It's okay, it's a bit simple, that kind of thing. Ninja Spirit, I like a bit of Ninja Spirit. It's sort of a run-and-gun game, except with a billion shurikens on screen at once. Um, I remember playing the 8-bit versions on the home computers in the UK. Ugh, not good. This is a million times better. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a really good conversion. It's a little bit flickery, and again, really, if you can play the coin-op, go play the coin-op. But uh, it's, it's good, it's good fun. Uh, Psychosis is... Uh, disappointing actually I hadn't put much time into this and played it properly over the weekend and I'm gonna have to say yeah it's a bit weak it's another um, side-scrolling uh, shooty shooter muck spaceship muck shooter there's so many of these on this thing but it's just not that really very good one it's got slightly weird graphics which are interesting but mm, no didn't get much joy out of that Space Harrier is a good port of Space Harrier simple as you know Sega's old into the screen shooty shooty um, Again, now that you can play the arcade version, does it? I've, I've never thought the Space Harry was much of a game for home release anyway, to be honest with you. It always felt like more of an arcade thing, but there we are. Splatterhouse is a very good port of, again, the arcade game Splatterhouse, which is, uh, you know, you walk from left to right usually, sometimes from right to left. Sometimes you climb ladders, but I tell you what you do all the time, kill monsters. Um, I'm not a massive fan of Splatterhouse, but every so often I fancy a game and I go back to it. I rarely go back to the first one, to be honest. Um, but it's here. It's decent version. I don't know. The, the controls aren't great, I think, is the thing for Splatterhouse. You always feel like you want to tell your bloody character to do something and he doesn't quite do it. And I, I felt that was less of a problem in later ones. Is. Is it pronounced is? I'm going to pronounce it is. Could be pronounced your Sinclair. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? Uh, book one and two. So it's another overhead Zelda thing. Um, so, But the people who are into such games say it's much better than Utopia. These are very... Well, I don't want to say, want to say very well regarded. I don't know. Quite well regarded. They're, they're looked on with fondness. So, yeah. If you like such things, you'll get many hours of enjoyment there. Bonk's Revenge. Bloody Bonk. Always revenging something. So Bonk was kind of... Uh, the mascot, kind of, for the PC Engine for a bit. They called him PC Kid. This is basically a sequel to the game, uh, PC Kid. It was also called Bonk's Adventure over here. So it always confused me because I thought he was called BC Kid because he's a caveman. But now it's PC Kid because of PC Engine. Uh, you see, it still confuses me to this day. Anyway, really fun, cute platformer. He's got a big heavy head. He jumps in the air and then squashes things with his head by turning upside down and headbutt stuff and stuff. It's really good fun. And most importantly... Uh, something people very rarely mention is that uh, when you eat like a big meat on the bone dinosaur power up thing, Bonk gets very angry and his head turns into a big bum. I think that's very important that people realise that, and they just don't. Uh, Kadash is next. So, Kadash, another coin op conversion. So, mm, yeah, but uh, sort of a platform with RPG elements. I always enjoy Kadash, and I don't know why. It's slow as hell. It really is. I, it's probably not that good a game in the scheme of things, but it's something I keep going back to. I don't know why. It's something in it that appeals. But Now, Parasol Stars. Oh my god. So. I thought Parasol Stars was an arcade game. There was no arcade version of Parasol Stars. It was uh, just written for the home market. So Parasol Stars, if you don't know, is the story of Bubble Bobble 3. So it goes Bubble Bobble, it goes uh, Rainbow Islands, then it goes Parasol Stars. I had played Parasol Stars a bit on the Amiga and remember really liking it. This version, which is kind of the lead version, is bloody fantastic. Like, this is probably... And there's a very strong argument for being the best game on the system. It is tip-top. When I say this system, I mean uh, the Mini here. Because I haven't played every single game on the PC Engine, so couldn't uh, comment. I've only played all the ones on here. Um, yeah, Parasol Stars is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, you will not go wrong with it. Air Zonk. So Zonk is kind of bonk from the future. <laughs> it's like a cyborg or something, I don't know. But it's a side-scrolling shoot -em up It's okay. Quite like the graphics, very clear and cartoony. It's fine. Newtopia 2 is, yeah, the sequel to Newtopia. Um, Zelda knockoff kind of thing, and it's meant to be all right. Slightly better than the first one, but mostly the same. Yeah. New Adventure Island is, well, it's kind of a Wonder Boy game. 
well to me it feels very much like a Wonder Boy game because it plays very similar to the first one but um, I don't know it's I never quite get on with it I don't know I prefer the simplicity of the very first Wonder Boy but yeah Wonder Boy has a very strange and checkered history and this is one of those games it's perfectly good but it just never clicked with me Soldier Blade is great really really great um it is a shoot 'em up as uh, you know we are saying many many times but it's a really fucking good one it's probably yeah i'm gonna say i think it's my favorite shoot 'em up on this device yeah as in the mini not it all the pc engine games because uh, i have a soft spot for uh oh there's a game like Cotton where you play is a horizontal scroll where you play a witch and I can never remember the name of it something like magical something or other um, it's not on here which I think is a massive massive shame so it's a really good game that but uh, yeah Soldier Blade fucking love Soldier Blade it's great it's one of the best uh, shoot 'em ups from that era Bomberman 93 is great really really good version of Bomberman um, best versions of Bomberman as far as I'm concerned are Bomberman 93 Bomberman 94 and Saturn Bomberman and I tell you what Bomberman 94 is on here as well I couldn't really pick between the two. Um, I like both of them, but uh, I'd have to play them more, especially because they tend to blur into one in my uh, memory. But yeah, really good version of Bomberman. You can't go wrong there. And Lords of Thunder. I've completely forgotten what Lords of Thunder is. Totally forgotten. To the extent that I'm going to have to uh, dub something in. I bring you greetings from the world of the future. Uh, yeah, it's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up, and it's really good. I hadn't played it before. It's got kind of a samurai ninja aesthetic thing going on, and yeah, really, really good one actually. Very tight controls, really interesting power-ups. Slightly spoiled for me though, because you pick up a lot of sort of gems as you're going along for score and stuff, and it's constantly making this bling 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 noise as you pick them up so you can't hear the soundtrack or any other noises and it really got on my nerves after a bit and almost spoiled what is otherwise a very good game anyway back to your scheduled timeline biddly boop biddly boop biddly boop now on to the pc engine games which are the japanese games quite literally in japanese so if they aren't arcadey games you can pick up very quickly and rely on text, you are shit out of luck, son. Right, start off with The Kung Fu, um, which has another name, China Warriors or something. Um, yeah, this is the game I always use to test PC engines because I have it on a hook card. And it's crap. It is crap. They've got, it's got massive jerky sprites that look like Bruce Lee, and it's it's just really, really janky and rubbish. Um, I can see why they've put it on here, though, because it is very different. Um, but, uh, yeah, you're not going to get much joy out of it. You'll load it up, have five minutes, on and go, bloody hell. And that's the end of that. Just like a necromancer I had never heard of. It is a Japanese RPG. Uh, it's got a slight horror theme. In fact, the graphics are heavily inspired by H.R. Giga, so there's a lot of biomechanical weirdness going on um unfortunately it's yeah a jrpg in japanese so unless you speak japanese it is of no consequence because you won't be able to understand it or therefore play it uh galaga 88 i really like galaga 88 it's a galaga update simple as that um gets a slightly rough time but i really like it i always have a really good time in galaga 88 so that's my recommendation fantasy zone i'm the other way around on most people seem to like fantasy zone uh, never did much for me um sort of horizontal uh, scrolly shooter where you can sort of um, loop around the same area a bit like Defender. It's got very passly graphics. It's fine. I, I've never enjoyed playing it. It's never did anything for me. Now, Dragon Spirit. Ooh, now we're talking. So, Dragon Spirit was an arcade game. A coin-op shooter they converted. Um, I had various versions for um, the home computers. It was always a bit shit. The arcade is okay, but the PC Engine version I like more. And I doubt I'm on my own there. Because the PC Engine version is easier. The arcade is too bloody difficult. But uh, Dragon Spirit PC Engine, yeah. I would, I would say I have more fun with that in the arcade version. Your mileage may vary. A parry gate ball! So, um, I always thought gate ball was like golf, but um, after attempting to play this game, um, it's more like croquet or something, I think. Uh, it took me a while to get my head around this one because, yeah, it's in Japanese, but um, you can get your head around it and play it. And it was all right, actually. Yeah, I think I'd probably stick to the golf game on here that I could understand, personally, but uh, hey, that's just me. Um, next up, Nectaris. So Nectaris is the Japanese version of Military Madness, the turn-based strategy game from earlier. Simple as. 
it's just a duplicate there's no reason to play it uh, unless you particularly want to play a version where you can't understand the text unless you can speak japanese dungeon explorer um yeah that's a duplicate again just japanese version of yeah dun dungeon explorer so frankly that's another game we mark off newtopia yet again yep it's just the japanese version that you can't quite understand of the game we've got on here in english i mean i like the idea that they just dumped all the games on, went, right, everybody gets everything. Although that's not strictly true. There are some, a couple of differences for different territories, but um, overall they've given you everything. And, you know, there's a few um, problems where basically you're getting the same game twice and one of the versions you can't understand, but, hey, it's completeness in it, and it's better than just leaving it off, frankly. PC Genjin. PC Genjin is, uh, well, it's Bonk's Adventure, I think is the name for it. Um, what we mentioned earlier. Simple as good old PC kids. Not as good as Bonk's Revenge, the sequel, but it's still pretty good. And it is a different game to one down here, so that's all good. Is, Oz, Is, whatever it's called, one and two. Yeah, Japanese versions of those. Meh. I mean, you yeah, yeah, just repetition in a different language. The Genji and the Heike clan. Yes, th that is a thing. I had never bloody heard of this game, and it's easily playable without understanding Japanese. So, the first stage was like an Amiga public domain ripoff of Ninja Spirit, is all I can say. It feels like a crap version of Ninja Spirit written in somebody's shed or something. The second stage um, was like the Kung Fu, uh, the big old sprites thing, and equally as janky, frankly. And apparently the third stage is something else still, but I didn't get that far. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's it somehow feels more amateur than the other games on here. Um, I mean, it's interesting for five minutes, but yeah. It's not exactly a quality edition. Uh, Super Darius is a horizontal shooter, and I mean, we all know the Darius series. It went on for a million years. Um, uh, Super Darius is okay. Don't know. If, if I'm after a Darius, I'll play Darius Gaiden usually on the Saturn, but um, yeah, it's not one of the better ones. Super Star Soldier. So this is kind of an earlier version of Soldier Blade, and it's not as good, but in fact, it's quite... It's, I don't want to say primitive, but it is quite an early one. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I've always had a soft spot for Superstar Soldier. I don't know why. It was the only game I ever bought on the Wii Virtual Console, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, really like it. I think you'll have a lot of fun with that. Daima Kamura is Ghouls and Ghosts. Just what Ghouls and Ghosts is called in Japanese. And this is a fantastic conversion of the arcade game. Really, really good. Cannot fault it. I mean, if you've got access to the arcade game, you might as well play that, um, because it's going to be slightly better, but there we go. Don't know what else to say there, really, other than it's too bloody hard, but that's ghouls and ghosts all over, isn't it? They didn't make it any easier for the PC engine or anything, but um, one day I will complete that game. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't plan to live that long. The Legend of Valkyrie. Um, so this is a game I was kind of dimly aware of, but hadn't actually put any time into. So it's sort of a... It was an arcade game, again, um, and it's sort of a top-down shooter, like a bit like Akari Warriors, but fantasy, and there's kind of some sword slashery stuff going on as well. It's um some rpg elements yeah i quite liked it actually um there's a little bit of japanese text but um seemed to get on all right without it uh yeah that's quite a nice addition actually aldine so aldines is a side scrolling shooter apparently it's very good i mean it seems a very good quality thing but i i can't bloody get on this it's just too bloody difficult for my liking you're like really bloody difficult i don't know if it's just me finding that or that is a common opinion but uh yeah, I'm not saying any of these uh, shoot 'em ups on this machine are particularly easy, because uh, they are quite difficult games in general, but Aldines, Aldines, I don't know, all seems a little bit OTD. Sairei Senshi Spriggan! Um, so this is a vertical shooter, um, where you play like a... Is it one where you play a robot-y thing? I think you do, like a mech. There's several of those, actually. Um, it's... It's got an interesting power-up system where you can kind of mix the power-ups together, but overall, once you've stopped messing about with the power-ups, frankly, it's just a bit kind of meh. I mean, it's decent enough, but compared to the other shooters on here, it's not one of the best ones. Newtopia 2 is a Japanese version of Newtopia 2. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Gradius! Oh yeah, love me some Gradius. Uh, it's coin-op art conversion. Really, really good coin-op conversion. And in fact, wait for it, it's better than the arcade version. It's got extra stages. 
this is like the, the PC Engine version of Gradius is kind of the top version of Gradius, even over the arcade. So that's lovely to see that on there, and equally lovely to see Salamander, um, which is part of the Gradius series and it's probably my fave of the Gradius games, actually. Um, I, I can't say it's the best version though. It kind of chugs a bit at times. This conversion, it's, it's still very good. But if you've got access to the arcade, go Salamander. But stick to PC Engine for Gradius. That's my tip for the top. Super Mamataro Dentetsu Two. This time, it's personal. Um, yeah, th this is a, a game. It's a some sort of board game. It's entirely in Japanese. I've got no idea and couldn't play it. And statistically, it's very unlikely you will be able to either. Ninja Ryukenden. Um, so this is actually Ninja Gaiden, but not the arcade Ninja Gaiden. It's based on the NES game. I, I didn't even know this was this existed. Um, the sort of PC Engine version of it. There's there's all sorts of weird versions of that um, NES Ninja Gaiden. There's a, like a version for bloody Amiga, which is based on the NES. Oh, it's very odd, very odd. Anyway, <clears throat> it's overly fiddly for me. Didn't enjoy it. Um, all I liked really was that you can jump in front of the status panel at the top, which amused me. <laughs> That's all I can say on that. I'd stick to the NES one there. Star Parodia. So, you know how Parodius is a piss take of Gradius with cutesy graphics? Well, this is the same thing, but for Star Soldier. I didn't know this existed. Um, and you play as a little shooty PC engine. Ah, endless fun. No, I really like that. Never played it before, never heard of it before, really enjoyed it. Yeah, hats off to it. Spriggan Mark II. So this is kind of the sequel to Sire Senshi Spriggan there. It's really odd because that's a vertically scrolling game. This is a horizontally scrolling game. Um, so it really did mix it up there, to say the least. Um, I don't know. I thought this was a bit crap, actually. It's not as good as the first one. And it keeps stopping for bloody cutscenes. Drove me fucking mad. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, here's another cutscene of some people talking in Japanese. No. No, this is a shooty game. I want to be doing the Twitch game shooting, not stopping and looking at this stuff I can't understand anyway. Snatcher we've been through, but yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, ah, so annoying. I mean, to play this version, if you don't understand Japanese, you will basically need a printout translation or something. There is an English version of the game, of course, but it's only for the Mega CD or Sega CD if you're in America. Um, there is no PC Engine version in English, which is why there is no version in English on here. Shame, because, you know, it looks very prominent as well, because it's, you know, a white where everything's generally darker. I thought that and Bomberman stand out. Anyway, Gradius 2. Um, Vulcan Venture. This was called Outside Japan, wasn't it? Vulcan Adventure? No, it was Vulcan Venture, wasn't it? Um, yeah. This is the best version, again, like Gradius. It's got extra bits in the arcade and have tip top. Can't say much more than that. Really good fun. Great shooter. Great shooter. And the first Choaniki. Yes. So Choaniki, yes, it is the series you're thinking of. The sort of crazy homoerotic bodybuilder shoot 'em up thingamajiggy. Um this isn't the best one in there. It's not as crazy as the latest one later ones, but it's still plenty of craziness in there. And I don't know, it's just not very good. It just doesn't play that well. I don't think. Um, yes, it's not as much fun as the others, but you never know what it's going to throw at you next. So when you're playing it for the first few times, you're still going to have a lot of fun just being surprised at the uh, very interesting enemies. Uh, then we've got Amakakumajo Dracula X Chino Rondo. As you may have guessed, this is Rondo of Blood, um, just in Japanese. Rondo of Blood is pretty much considered, I think, I think it's safe to say this, sort of the best um, non-RPG Ca uh, Castlevania. So before Castlevania sort of became the Metroidvania games with the RPG elements with Symphony of the Night, um, this was kind of the best one. Actually, I don't know where it was released chronologically. Maybe it came out after Symphony of the Night, although that, although that seems unlikely. Um, yeah, it's really good. Really good platform action game. Really nice. I much prefer the later Metroidvania stuff, but uh, doesn't mean that isn't a good game. Bomberman 94, I mentioned earlier, is good. Uh, very, very good. Exceptionally good, actually. One of the best Bomberman games. Is it better than 93? Don't know. Don't know. I'd have to play them some more to tell you, but frankly, they're both on it, so who cares? Bomberman Panic Bomber. Oh, God, every character gets his own bloody puzzle game eventually, doesn't he? So this is a Bomberman-themed falling blocks puzzler. It's about as generic as you can bloody get. I mean, it's fine, but the whole time I was playing it, I was thinking I'd much rather be playing Super Puzzle Fighter, frankly, which is similar but much better. Um, and Ginga Fukai Densetsu Sapphire. Yes, it's a vertical scroller. I hadn't played it before. 
It's really good. Really good. Very impressed with that game. Um, tip top. And that's all the games on it. But wait. No, it isn't. It's not all the games, because there's two hidden ones. I shit ye not, comrades. Right, I'll tell you how to get them, just in case... Well, I'm sure every website in the world has got it uh, noted down, but we'll say anyway. Right, what you do is you highlight Salamander, and then you uh, press the Select button twice, and you get to play Force Gear, which is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up uh, where you play as a sort of battle mech type thing, and it's, it's okay. It's okay, so it's not marvellous, but as a little extra unadvertised freebie, pretty nice. Press select three times, and you get Twin B Returns, which is a vertical shooter with graphics a bit like Fantasy Zone, or even simpler. Um, and it's it's not great, I'll be honest. It's it's a little bit overly simple for me. But again, as a little freebie hidden game, that's quite nice. And it brings your total up to 59 games. Well, it doesn't really, does it? Because, you know, you can't really play the Japanese ones and there's all the duplicates and that. So, if we think about it, there are 32 Japanese games, 25 English games, and two hidden games. So that's 59. But five of the games are repeated and three of them you cannot play un, uh, you know, basically at all unless you are fluent in Japanese. So realistically, there are 51 games, 49 advertised, and the two extra ones. There's also a couple of other little hidden secrety things, maybe more that they haven't found yet, but uh, ones I know of. Um, if you uh, go over to... Oh, I'm trying to think what it was. It was Fantasy Zone... Gradius and I think Salamander. Um, if you uh, go onto them and hold down the select button and press run to select them, you get slightly alternate versions. Like, um, we'll use Fantasy Zone as the example. Fantasy Zone has been recolored, I think, to look a bit more like the arcade machine, and the music sounds different. Yeah, actually, I'll uh, demonstrate. So there we go! It's now that time of the video where we moan about the games we wanted on there that we didn't get. I would have liked to have seen uh, Cotton, uh, Fantastic Nights, uh, Little Witch, Growing Shoom Up, that I mentioned earlier, and I'd like to see the other, the game that's like that, called Magical Something or Other. I can never remember the name of it, but uh, I like that better than Cotton. I'd like to have seen that on there. Uh, there's no Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. There is a fantastic version of Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition for this, but just not on there. I mean... I don't really have a problem with that, because everybody's got so many bloody versions of Street Fighter 2 now, and the Championship Edition isn't even, you know, the bestest of them, and you'd have to be playing it on a two-button pad, and let's face it, it's fine. It's fine. You can play that and a million other things better. Um, Gekibo isn't on here, which is like a weird... Gekibo? I'm going to say Gekibo. Um, this is like a weird sort of photography game, which is very strange, but really good fun, and it's just re so much fun to play. It's a real shame that's not on there, because it's quite unique as well. Speaking of unique, um, there's no Gamola Speed, right? Which is this really weird sort of action puzzle game. And there's no other game quite like it, so it's... Well, not, not that I'm aware of, at least. So it's just a real shame that isn't on here, because it's quite a unique PC engine thing. Uh, there's also really nice arcade conversions of uh, Atomic Robo Kid and Mr. Heli. It would have been nice to have seen those on there as well. But hey, it's still a really good selection, and it's a really good selection of games that a lot of people won't have played. So that's pretty good, isn't it? So how does this stack up? Well, the thing is... When you look at how well the emulation is put in, how good the controller is, how good the definition is on the screen, and indeed the options of how to change it if you should want, and the lineup of the games, yeah, I mean, you have to cap knock the numbers down due to repetition and stuff, but there's a lot of bloody games on here still, and the overall quality is really high. There's only like two or three on here I'd say, oh, don't bother with. Do you know what I mean? Out of all of those. And, I mean, Parasol Stars alone is bloody fantastic, but there's a lot of fun on here. And they're games which, I mean, it's very unlikely, unless you were super into the TurboGrafx-16 in America, you wouldn't have played. And a lot of these you just wouldn't have played at all because they were Japanese only. And if you're European, I mean, bloody hell, unless you picked up an emulation later or somehow your dad was like, I don't know, the um, worked for NEC or something, you're very unlikely to have seen these at all back in the day. So it's really nice to have a very easy way 
to experience these games for people who don't want to mess about with emulation and that kind of stuff. Buy this, plug it into your telly, jobs are good and fantastic gift for people who are into their video games and haven't played these and want to spend a bit of time doing it which i mean you know with uh, all the lockdowns and things going on at the moment could be the time to do that so i am going to say from i think this is the best mini console it's the best implementation and it's the best all-round set of games i mean there's a lot of shoot 'em ups if you don't like shoot 'em ups mm, mm, there's still enough in there to keep you interested but it will knock you down a bit but play some bloody shoot 'em ups there's some good ones play soldier blade damn you it's fantastic however there's always a bloody sticking point in there and the sticking point this time is the price because it may be the best mini console for me, but it's also the most bloody expensive. I had to pay a hundred pounds to Rich Uncle Amazon for this. And a hundred pounds is a bloody lot in the mini consoles. I mean, some of them are 60, 70 quid. The PlayStation one was knocked down to like 30 and came with, I think that came with two controllers, didn't it? Kind of relevant because it was a bit shit, frankly, but um, so depressing. I couldn't even bring myself to review it, in fact. Um, so maybe that's not the best comparison, but it's pricey. It is pricey. £100 is a lot more than the others, which is a shame, and you only get the one controller, whereas most of them had two, and you're like, mm, mm, you know. But if this goes down in price a bit, wow, this would be like a massive recommendation for anyone who isn't emulating these things. If you've got your Raspberry Pi set up, or even just a good PC set up with a decent controller, and you've got this emulated, there's no point in this. It's just a pretty thing for your shelf. Um, do you really need another one of those if you're not going to turn it on? Mm, mm, we're looking at you. I, I mean, I really like this, and it's my favourite of the mini consoles, but if I wasn't reviewing it, I wouldn't have bought it just because I can play all these another time anyway. Although I am pleased that it uh, effectively forced me to play a few of these that I hadn't come across, which is nice, and maybe it'll do the same for you. But yeah, overall... It's overpriced a bit, but it's really, really bloody good. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I love reading books I've written myself. So my first book, Terrible Old Games You've Probably Never Heard Of, it's this one, is being published in paperback in a few days. And you can order a copy now from Amazon or from your local book place, what you buy books from, or whatsoever. And you can also buy signed copies from Unbound, direct from the publisher there. Um, we've also got a few little merchandise bits out, like T-shirts and pin badges and mugs and stuff like that, if you should enjoy such things. And my second book, Attack of the Flickering Skeletons, is still available in hardback if you should want a copy. But yeah... Paperback, terrible old games you've probably never heard of, coming very soon. I think it's the first time it has been properly published in America. So if you are in the US of A, now is your chance to get hold of a copy for slightly less than the hardback cost, because paperbacks are slightly cheaper. That's how that works. So if you want to hear about some games that are old and terrible and you've probably never heard of them, then this is very much the book you should be looking for. That and Attack of the Flickering Skeletons as well. Bye. Like, boy, boy.